good morning my dear students welcome to your economics class so students we are currently doing the chapter poverty as a challenge in our last class we have discussed about the various dimensions or aspects of poverty so students we discussed the dimensions with the help of two case studies one a rural case which revolves around the story of lakha singh and the other one is the urban case which revolves around the story of ram charan so students both the case studies helped us to know about the various dimensions of poverty they showed us that poverty means illiteracy poverty means hunger poverty means child labor poverty means big family sizes poverty means ill treatment which is meted out to the poor people and poverty means living with a sense of hopelessness and students poverty also means landlessness and lack of shelter poverty means health hazards and poverty means malnutrition so we came across various dimensions of poverty and students these are not the only dimensions there are numerous dimensions of poverty you just need to think okay so students today we are going to start with a new topic that is poverty as seen by social scientist and we will cover this topic in two parts today we will cover the first part and in our next class we shall uh, do the next part okay so students this is your uh, learning outcome for today's class uh, from today's class you will develop an understanding of the different indicators of poverty which are used by the social scientist okay and you will get to know about one new concept that is the concept of social exclusion so let us start with our today's class well students we all know that poverty is the state of being poor and poverty is the inability of the people to access the basic needs of life but the question is how do you identify poor people how do you know whether a person is poor or not there has to be some criteria or there has to be some indicator isn't it so students the two most commonly used or the two general indicators of poverty which are used by everyone are the level of income and consumption that means it is the income of a person and it is the consumption level of a person which helps us to decide whether or not that person is poor okay so the two most commonly used criteria of poverty or the two most commonly used indicators of poverty are the level of income of a person and his level of consumption these are the indicators which are used by everyone but students there are people who uh, are experts or you can say the people who work for the society the various social scientists their way of looking at poverty is somewhat different from our way of looking at poverty okay they look at poverty from a different perspective and accordingly they use certain different indicators to understand and to measure poverty okay so the indicators or to be precise the social indicators which are used by the social scientist to understand and to measure poverty are illiteracy level okay lack of general resistance due to malnutrition this means a uh, low immune system that means the inability of our body to uh, prevent ourselves from getting uh, various diseases okay so that is lack of general resistance due to malnutrition then lack of access to healthcare facilities lack of job opportunities lack of access to safe drinking water sanitation etc so students these are the social indicators which are used by the social scientist to understand and to measure poverty okay so while the common people use indicators like income and consumption the social uh, scientist have their own way of uh, measuring poverty they use indicators like illiteracy level lack of general resistance due to malnutrition lack of access to healthcare education facilities lack of job opportunities lack of access to clean and safe drinking water sanitation etc so these are the various social indicators okay but students there are two social indicators which are very common and which are mostly used 
by the social scientist there are many social indicators but of these many social indicators there are two such social indicators which are frequently used by the social scientists and which are the most important ones okay so the most important social indicators are social exclusion and vulnerability okay so students uh, let me just repeat once again in general the indicators of poverty which are used by people every person it is income and consumption but students the social scientist they look at poverty from a dis different perspective the indicators used by the social scientist or the social indicators include the illiteracy level lack of general resistance to malnutrition lack of access to health care education etc etc and students there are two most important social indicators which are frequently used by the social scientists these are social exclusion and vulnerability so today we will discuss about social exclusion and in our next class we will be discussing about vulnerability all right so students what is social exclusion so social exclusion it is a process or according to this concept the poor people they are excluded from the society such that they have to live only in a poor surrounding with other poor people that means the poor people they generally do not live in the areas where the better of people or where the uh, rich uh, sections of the people live so poor people you will notice that uh, i don't know if you have noticed or not but poor people they mostly live in areas where the other poor people live they never live in the areas where the rich people live isn't it so there is a separate corner for the poor people in the society so all the poor people live in that corner okay so poor people are excluded from the society and they live in a poor surrounding with the other poor people okay they are excluded from the society and it's not that they are just excluded from living with the better of people but they are also excluded from enjoying various social rights social equality that the better of people in the society enjoy okay so students poor people are denied equal opportunities poor people are denied equal rights and poor people are also denied uh, equal benefits and facilities like the other people in the society okay and students this social exclusion it is both a cause as well as a consequence of poverty so please listen very carefully social exclusion leads to poverty that means social exclusion is a cause of poverty and at the same time poverty also leads to social exclusion that is uh, social exclusion is also a consequence of poverty now the question is how so students what happens how social exclusion is a cause so what happens when people are excluded from the society they are uh, when they are excluded from the mainstream society what happens they fail to develop the social skills isn't it they they are isolated they have to live separately they are excluded from the society so since they are not uh, they do not get the chance of mixing up with the society they fail to develop the social skills which are required not only that they most of the time live in the poor surroundings in the unhygienic conditions which leads to poverty which breeds poverty because it affects their health condition isn't it so uh, they might uh, become uh, ill isn't it so what happens when poor people are when uh, people are excluded from the society uh, they fail to develop social skills and at the same time it also affects their health both physical as well as their mental health okay so what happens they develop a depressed state of mind uh, they develop various health hazards so these all lead to poverty if a person is not able to concentrate in his work if a person is not allowed to intermingle with the rest of the society if a person lives in unhygienic condition do you think he will uh, be uh, able to come out of poverty no so in this way social exclusion leads to poverty okay if a person is excluded from the society if a person is excluded from enjoying his basic rights and facilities he will never be able to develop in his life so this leads to poverty on the other hand how social exclusion is a consequence of poverty 
so students what happens when people are poor so poor people are in turn denied the basic facilities or they are denied the minimum requirements they are denied equal benefits they are denied equal facilities that the better of people enjoy so this is the consequence part okay so if people are poor they are excluded from the society they are excluded from enjoying various the facilities and benefits that the rest of the society enjoy so this is how uh, social exclusion is a consequence of poverty okay so students uh, social exclusion leads to poverty that means it is a cause of poverty and at the same time poverty also leads to social exclusion which means that social exclusion is the consequence of poverty okay so students uh, social exclusion if we have to define it uh, we can define it as it is a process through which individuals or groups of individual are excluded from the various facilities benefits and opportunities that the better of people enjoy better of people means the rich people okay and students uh, one example of social exclusion is the caste system we all know that in india there is this long history of discrimination against the lower caste people against the lower tribe people isn't it so because of this caste system people belonging to certain caste or you can say the lower caste people Mm, uh, they are never totally accepted by the mainstream society okay they are considered as impure or they are considered as uh, someone different okay they are not accepted wholeheartedly so this caste system is one classic example of social exclusion another example of social exclusion can be the condition of widows so what happens students after the death of the husband the widows in most of the remote places of course in uh, remote places what happens after the death of the husband the women's life becomes very pathetic they are not allowed to attend any kind of ceremony any kind of functions they are not allowed to visit the temples they are not allowed to visit the uh, relatives places they are made to live in just one corner of the house they are made to wear white clothes they are not allowed to intermingle with the rest of the women of the society isn't it so this is another example of social exclusion okay so students i hope you all are clear and social exclusion is in fact far more worse than just not having money okay so don't think that social exclusion only is uh, related with uh, poverty it has far uh, uh, worse consequences okay it has long term impact it can impact the mental state of the people it can impact the overall life of the people it can impact the welfare of the people okay therefore social exclusion can lead to or it can cause even more damage than having a very low income okay so the most important or i can say or uh, one of the most important social indicator of poverty is social exclusion and the other one being vulnerability so we will discuss about vulnerability in our next class okay uh, so students these are your homework questions which are the most common indicators of poverty so the most common indicators of poverty are the general indicators which are used by all the people so this will be the level of income and consumption okay then the second question state the various social indicators of poverty as used by the social scientist here you can write about social exclusion vulnerability along with that you can also write illiteracy level you can write lack of general resistance due to malnutrition lack of access to uh, healthcare facilities lack of access to job opportunities education opportunities lack of access to safe drinking water sanitation etc so these are the various social indicators okay then the next question what is social exclusion give an example so you need to define uh, social exclusion along with that give an example okay then the last question students how is social exclusion both a cause and a consequence of poverty this question carries four marks so for this question students you make two paragraphs in the first paragraph you write social exclusion as a cause of poverty this should be the heading 
and in the second paragraph your heading should be social exclusion as a consequence of poverty okay so under the cause you write what happens when people are excluded from the society how it leads to poverty and under the consequence part you write what happens when people are poor when people are poor how they are excluded from the society all right and in case you have any doubt do let me know okay i'll surely help you okay then students thank you so much see you all in the next class have a nice day